Hi, hi, Crystal here. Welcome to another video with the Interactive Merced HQ. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this iPad Stable Diffusion Touch Designer um, integration tutorial. We're using Dot Simulates Stable Diffusion tool and using NDI to connect to the iPad. I'm going to show you two different methods of using the camera that's on the iPad to can do like performance to make this uh, tiling kaleidoscope effect, or you can also do a um, draw um, using Procreate, but you can use any drawing app you want that can create this pattern. And obviously you can use any uh, prompt you want um, for stable diffusion, but currently I am doing a snake, uh, a snake, dancing snake prompt. Um, I This tutorial, I will go over on how to set up a stable diffusion um, tool. I'll link below on how to set that up because there's a lot of good resources and uh, we're going to more focus on how to make this and already have a tool ready and set this up. So let's begin. So in the past, I've done this um, table screen capture and touch designer through NDI tutorial. I'll put this link in the caption below, um, but pretty much you can download this screen capture for NDI um, app. It's free. And once you have it, make sure you are on the same IP address as your machine. And then you can press, press to start. And then you'll say to start broadcasting and you can click on to start broadcasting. And from there, we can do NDI into uh, touch designer. So once you have the capture for NDI, app download in your iPad and let's and you're pressed on start st start streaming uh, start broadcasting uh, let's go open in your blank touch designer file and we'll do a NDI in and if the IP address is the same you should be able to just see it in sources so if I click on sources and right here I see the window for NDI great great and then I'm going to open Procreate. It's going to be my drawing tool app. And I'm going to put this on the bottom left so you can see what is happening the whole time. So um, in my Procreate, I uh, I just did a blank a black background. So this then will be easier to um, get this threshold out. So you can literally, starting from a white background, add a blank one, choose a black, and can paint it black. And then on a separate layer, this will be a white layer. Choose a smaller brush. Great. So I can work with that. Um, great. But I don't want any of these border over here. So I'm going to add a crop. In the crop, I'll just literally crop out what I don't want and also can zoom this in bigger. So on the left, I'll crop this out. And on the top, I'll crop that out. And that seems good. Uh, right now, the resolution is pretty big and kind of random. So I'm going to put a fit. And... Um, I'll just fit this to a thousand, a thousand and fit outside. Cool. And I want this to be kind of animating when I'm using the stable diffusion tool. And then right now it's static, so I can add a noise and this noise, I'll make it to the same resolution to be a thousand to a thousand 
and um, I'll make this period smaller, um, maybe the exponent a little bit softer, and the harmonics a bit higher. I'll turn on monochrome, I'll turn off monochrome, and transform Z, I'll do abs times uh, dot seconds, and I want it slower, so times point five. That's good. And between this, I'm going to add a threshold. Um, then I get the black background out. Um, and I'll add a multiply. And this multiply will now kind of animate this. Um, and I add a null after this. Great. Um, and what if I want to have instead the camera? And the camera will, I want to just have my silhouette and, um, but also have it animating. So right now it's not doing that great. So um, if you have a PC, you can do in Vita broadcast. Uh, NVIDIA background removal. So I'm going to make another chain from the fit. And this is not enough. I need to do a mat top. And the mat, I'll connect this to the bottom two and connect the original fit source in the first. And that will give me a mat of myself. And I will add a switch top between these two um, because sometimes I want to have it so it's just uh, my silo uh, my silhouette or have not have the background removed or have um, just a line and this will also create a little animation on myself great um, I'll rename this null to be source null and then I can connect this to Stream Diffusion. Um, I have the Stream Diffusion tool saved in my palette. I can drag it over here. And I already set this up. Um, again, I'll link how to set up the Stream Diffusion um, in the caption below. Um, a few different also other HQ videos that use Stream Diffusion to have more inspiration. Um, but if everything is good, I should be able to just connect this in and settings, press pulse. This window will pop up and it will um, have a bunch of text and then it will start running. And right now it's currently still set in the default prompt, which is um, a default fancy banana, which there you go. I am a fancy banana. And I have a dancing snake and you can play with the amount of steps. The, the higher the steps, the closer it is to the source, but I'll kind of play with something in the middle. Um, Cool. And this is kind of creates a cool pattern to be tiled, but I also don't want the black background in the back. So um, there's different ways to remove the background. You can do a threshold and uh, mat it. But the one uh, method that I found that kind of gets the most clean result is using uh, I'll first add a null. And I will use a RGB key. In this RGB key, all the um, red mins, I want to increase it and then have the red soft also increase. So um, since they have an RGB, um, an easier way to make them all consistent, I'll have a constant chop. In this constant chop, um, the first channel, I'll call it the um, RGB min. And the second one, I'll call it RGB soft. Cool, add an all, good practice. And then I will connect the RGB min to all the uh, reference 
RGB min and then um, connect the soft to the soft low. Great, and as I can creep this up a little, start seeing that the background is gone and this can soften more and can play around tweaking this. Cool, cool. Um, now let's make this into a tile. So you can add a transform. And this transform on the tile, I'll change it to mirror. And you can scale, scroll it down. And becoming a tile. In this transform, you can, uh, in the background, change the color directly from here or you can comp it with a ramp or something or a different background. Um, make sure the alpha is a one and the comp over background color is turned on. This is do a dark blue. You're making this kind of kaleidoscope effect. Um, I would actually want to increase the scale and I'll add a null and call this out. Um, let's try doing in the drawing way. So this switch, I'm going to turn it to one and switch the app and have this as my background so you can see what's happening as I'm drawing, creating this pattern and can also add a feedback if you want. Uh, later in the chain, um, just doing the palette feedback tool. Um, I'll do it after the RGB, RGB red. The feedback doesn't work very well because of the, <laughs> of the RGB key, um, but even on its own, it's kind of interesting, but just want to show you a method to make a pattern um, and can obviously decide how you want to scale it and tweak the RGB as one. And since this is also on iPad, it's not limited to just drawing in camera, but you can do it open an app or use a game. And how does a game in Stable Diffusion, what type of um, effect does it give? And what's kind of cool of doing on an iPad versus just a webcam is the ability to move it around easily and kind of um, even if you don't have background removal, what type of camera filters can you use on um, using the use of an iPad. So um, I hope this can just be a little inspiration to see uh, what is possible and I'm excited to see what you make. And feel free to tag the HQ and myself. Uh, I'll leave my handle in the caption below. Till next time, bye. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.